What determines where and how many species exist? Bio 111L, Laboratory 9. What is ecology? Ecology is the scientific study of the interaction of organisms with one another and with their physical environment. Where and how many species exist is determined by the following. Dispersal, habitat selection, physiological tolerance, and biological interactions. Dispersal is when an organism moves from one site to another site in order to breed or to have offspring in the case of animals or to grow in the case of plants. Passive dispersal is when an organism travels with the assistance of someone or something else. For example, this dandelion seed being blown by the wind is an example of passive dispersal. Active dispersal is when an organism travels without assistance. For example, thousands of migratory species make arduous journeys each year to breed and have offspring. Why disperse? Sometimes the trouble of traveling is worth the payoff. We usually observe dispersal in species that tend to benefit the most from it. What are the benefits to dispersal? The benefits to dispersal include the possibility to locate new resources and to leave unfavorable conditions. Another benefit to dispersal can be avoiding competition between genetically related individuals and also avoiding possible breeding with closely related individuals. Of course, there are also costs associated with dispersal. The downfalls of dispersal include that it takes energy and there are always significant risks involved with dispersal. It takes time and you need to have the right environmental conditions in order for travel to take place. Plants are non-motile, so in order for their seeds to be dispersed, they will rely on someone or something else to assist them. Seeds can be dispersed by one or more of the following mechanisms, gravity, wind, ballistic, water, and animals, including humans. Seed dispersal by gravity. Fruits that disperse using gravity tend to be large, round, and heavy. As the fruits ripen, they tend to get heavier until gravity takes over and the fruit falls to the ground. This allows them to fall off the tree and roll to a new spot. This mechanism is used for apples, coconuts, pears, and more. Seed dispersal by wind. Light as a feather, these wispy seeds get swept up by the gentlest of breezes and flutter onward to their new homes. We see this mechanism of wind dispersal in dandelions, swan plants, and cottonwoods. Seed dispersal by ballistics. Going out with a bang, the seeds of violets, jewelweed, and witch hazel disperse by literally bursting out of their pods and springing forth ready to take on the world. One plant that does this is called the gorse. The gorse can launch its seeds up to an impressive nine feet. The pods of the gorse plant literally pop open with an audible sound when these seeds shoot out. Seed dispersal by water. Plants that grow by the water depend on the water as a mechanism for dispersal for their seeds. Examples of plants that do this include palm trees, water lilies, and brook lime. These plants produce seeds that are light and buoyant so that they easily float on the water. Seed dispersal by animals. 
the animal eats the fruit, but only the juicy part is digested. The stones and seeds and pits pass through the animal's digestive system and are excreted to form new plants. This can be far away from the parent plant. Blackberry, cherry, apple seeds are all dispersed in this way. Limiting factors. In ecology, limiting factors refers to things such as food, water, habitat, finding mates, weather. When resources like food, water, habitats, and mates are in short supply, there will be an increase in competition between individuals for such resources. This creates intraspecific competition. Intraspecific competition is when members of the same species compete for the same resources. Habitat selection. Think about the factors you look at when you move. Proximity to work, to the store, to the movies, etc. Is it in a neighborhood that has good schools? cost? Are you in an area with a low crime rate? What amenities does the community have to offer you? What factors make a good habitat? Some of the factors that make a good habitat include having lots of food available, having few predators, having a habitat that is easy to defend, if you have a habitat that is easy to defend, this will also help the survival rate of the offspring. Also, you want to make sure that the habitat is close by accessible water and in close proximity to mates. And of course, the climate has to be tolerable. Speaking of climates needing to be tolerable, this brings us to talk about physiological tolerance. Organisms have different conditions in which they are able to survive. These allowable conditions greatly influence the distribution of a species. The factors that influence where a particular species can live include temperature, humidity and rainfall, soil composition, acidity and alkalinity, salinity, and oxygen levels. Another consideration is the biological interactions. Sometimes these biological interactions are the result of coevolution. One type of coevolution is called symbiosis. Symbiosis is the behavioral adaptation that has come about through the coevolution of two closely linked species. There are different types of symbiosis. Mutualism is when both species benefit from the interaction. Commensalism is when one species benefits from the interaction, but the other is not affected in any way. And parasitism. In parasitism, one species benefits from the interaction, but the other species is harmed. Predator adaptations. The way a predator hunts, catches, and kills its food is determined by many factors, such as the adaptations of the predator and the prey and the type of habitat they live in. Physical ability, including speed and strength, is very important for predator success. Hunting strategies. Let's look at the chase. Some predators have the advantage of speed over their prey, but chasing costs a lot of time and biological energy. So a lot of predators will not chase a potential meal unless 
there is a good chance of succeeding and capturing the prey, or unless the prey is a substantial enough meal to make it worth the effort. The ambush. For the predator who uses ambush, patience is the key, hiding in motionless silence, waiting for the opportune time to pounce. The ambush allows the predator to conserve some energy and to take advantage of smaller bite-sized prey that the predator would likely have overlooked if they had to use too much effort to capture it. Prey Adaptations Let's look at Coolest Camouflage. Behavioral response. Responses influence behavior of animals and its orientation within the habitat. A positive response is a response that orients the organism towards the stimuli. A negative response will orient the organism away from the stimuli. Biological interactions. Biological interactions include predation, Predation is beneficial for the predator, but harmful for the prey. There are different types of predation. There's carnivory predation, which is when an animal eats another animal. There's also herbivory predation, which is when an animal eats a plant. Parasitism is also considered a type of predation. Because it is an interaction that benefits one species while harming the other. And cannibalism is going to be beneficial for one individual of the species, but harmful to the individual of the species being eaten. Predation coevolution. An increase in prey efficiency of escape will automatically lead to increase in predator efficiency of capture. As the prey start to run away faster, 
the predators must learn to chase faster. This week in your laboratory, you will be observing the mechanisms of dispersal and looking at the behavior and habitat selection of pill bugs. Then you will do an exercise to investigate the factors affecting predator and prey survival. The predation challenges that you will be undergoing include looking at the effects of physical ability, of intraspecific competition, of camouflage, habitat complexity, and prey density. Thank you for watching.